wow, this guy, this next guy coming up, first time. Wow, we had so much fun. <laughs> He's nuts. No. <laughs> hey, yes. Okay. They know. And now we know. He's, he's very funny. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, a big hand for John Allen. Come on, give him a hand. John Allen. There he is. How are we doing? How are the pros? Yummy. So, welcome to the Brokerage Comedy Club, and I hope you're enjoying your evening of stand-up comedy. And in case you're wondering, yeah, I am standing up. <laughs> Before I started in this little venture of comedy, I was actually working with a ventriloquist. And unfortunately, I had to give it up, because it's very uncomfortable spending most of your day stuffed in a suitcase. <laughs> now, we all know that things tend to shrink in the wash, and please don't go there. But unfortunately for me, this is what happened after my first bath. Now, I've had to deal with the indignities of being short all my life. There's nothing I can do with it. It comes with the territory. What are you going to do? But we just celebrated the holidays, and at work we had our Christmas party. And the organizer comes up to me and says, John, we want you to have a big part in the Christmas party this year. I said, well, that's great. I, I would really love to be Santa. He said, well, no, we want you to be the elf. But they said, we really think you're going to be happy, though. We're having the party catered by Keebler. <laughs> now, I recently ran into an old friend of mine from back in the day, and we were talking, and I said, you know, I, I know I'm short. Did you always have to rub it in and call me Shorty and Shorty and never by my, my name? And he says, well, John, you know, you kind of brought it upon yourself. And I'm like, really? How? He goes, well, you remember that time we were out in a back plane hide and go seek and you had us out there for about four and a half hours? I think, yeah. I think, well, nobody bothered to look at the barbecue. <laughs> Now, I recently retired from just over 42 years in civil service. I, I enlisted in the Air Force. I was in the post office, the New York City Police Department, and I retired after 26 years, a little over, with the New York State Court System. And we do have some distinguished court officers in the New York Now, when I was on the police department, one of the things I wanted to do was join the mounted unit, because I like riding horses. So I went down to the headquarters and spoke to the sergeant, and I handed my application to be on the mounted unit, and he stamps it, and he hands it right back to me. And I said, Sarge, denied so quickly? He goes, sorry, John, we don't have any ponies. <laughs> now, my entire career in the court system was spent in family court, which is basically the audition for the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> you can attest to that. One of the jobs that I had was as a court officer. And one of the duties of a court officer is to hand evidence up to the judge. So what you do is you have to take the evidence from the lawyer, and for me, they installed the trampoline so I could reach up there and go to the judge. Another job I had, I had graduated, not graduated, but I was promoted to sergeant, and I was in charge of security. So I'm in the lobby one day, and letting people into the building, and a gentleman comes in, and he has these two animals with him, an iguana and a snake, true story. And I said, sir, I'm sorry, but I can't let you in the building with those animals. He says, no, you have to let me in the building. Okay, can you explain why? He said, well, the iguana is my support animal. The snake is my lawyer. <laughs> now, I had this supervisor <laughs> that I did not get along with very well. This woman never, ever 
shaved her legs. <laughs> and she always wore skirts. Now, I come from a military background, PD. I keep myself my hair cropped. When you're in that environment, you keep yourself in a certain decorum. But be that as it may. So at one time around Halloween, we're all talking about what we're going to do and what we're going to be. And she comes up to me and she says, So John, what are you going to be this year? A Marine again? I said, no, yeah, maybe. What are you going to be? Chewbacca? <laughs> she just back, she goes, no! This year my sister's Chewbacca. I'm going to be Bigfoot. <laughs> so, with that, I, uh, one of the things I had to do was commute back and forth to work every day. I had to take the train every day. Took the same train. And every day there's this woman on the train doing her makeup. And you've been there, right? So one day I said to her, ma'am, with all due respect, you mean to tell me that you can't get up a couple of minutes earlier and do that at home? Well, she gets pretty indignant. And she says, well, Excuse me, sir, and with all due respect, I am not going to take criticism from a man sitting there in his Buzz Lightyear pajamas. <laughs> now, I recently signed up for a dating service. <laughs> I'll be here until Thursday, folks. Thank you very much. Want to try that again? I recently signed up for a dating service. Your turn. And I went down to the agency. And they gave me this big book of photographs to look at. Now let me tell you something, folks. Most of the pictures of these women, they look like mug shots. So I'm thumbing through the book. And I see one. And I point to the picture and I said, this is the one, this is the one. The woman says, John, are you telling me that this is the woman you may want to date, could possibly be the love of your life? I'm like, no, this is the one who recently robbed me. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like that joke. I was at Ikea recently, now I wasn't there to shop. I was there to sample their world-famous meatballs. We've all been there, right? You're gonna love this one. So I'm standing online waiting for my meatballs. And I asked the gentleman to come over. I said, sir, can, can I come over? Can I ask you a question? He said, yeah, sure. I said, can you explain to me what the arrows on the floor are for? He goes, well, yeah. The arrows take you from the meatballs straight back to the toilet. <laughs> so, now I get my tray, and I'm ready to have my lunch, and they turn around, I'm in Ikea, now I've got to build a table. <laughs> so, another thing I have an issue with is shopping carts. So, I'm in the supermarket, and I'm coming down the aisle, and this man comes around the corner, and he crashes into my cart. And I'll tell you something, man. I was really pissed off. I was angry. I really wanted to confront this guy. Problem is, I was still strapped to the seat. <laughs> now, now, I've, I've got to give him his due. He was very nice. He said, sir, I'm sorry I crashed into your cart. Oh, by the way, they hit you. You dropped your city cup. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. I, I want to I wanna say one thing. I want to I say thank you. I think props have to go to Peter and Rich. This is an amazing experience. And what we went through for six or seven weeks writing these jokes was amazing. I want to also acknowledge my classmates, Anthony, Gary, and Michelle. This was a total collaborative effort. There was no ego. Everybody pitched me and helped everybody do their jokes. It was amazing. I, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank Rich enough. Congratulations. And if anybody's thinking about doing this, 
I highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. John Allen, let him hear it. John Allen. John Allen, sorry we don't have any ponies. No, it's I have a lot of favorite lines when it comes to John Allen. 